الحمد لله الحمد لله الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد نحمده حمدا كثيرا ونشكره شكرا عظيما نصلي ونسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم In the few minutes that I have I would like to remind myself and all of you of a very important lesson post Ramadan after the month of Ramadan Alhamdulillah we are now in the month of Shawwal on the day of Jumu'ah, the day of Friday, which is a day of Eid for the Muslims. And Rasulullah has declared this day to be superior to that of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Recently, we celebrated Eid al-Fitr and we all had a, had a bath. We wore new clothes or at least uh, clean clothes and we went to visit each other and there was a, a beautiful atmosphere. And so in the same way, the day of Friday must be celebrated as a day of Eid and now that we are in the month of Shawwal it's very important for us to uh, remember and to research to read about the benefits of this month um, it's a shame that a lot of our youngsters will know very much about uh, significant events in the non-muslim calendar which is also very important as well living in this country but uh, somebody once said that to destroy a people you simply have to sever their roots. You have to cut off their roots. And so if we don't make the effort to teach our children about their history, about their heritage, about their roots, about the great uh, Muslim leaders of the past, about their beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, about the significant events in the Islamic calendar, then we cannot complain if we then find our youngsters uh, taking footballers and actors and actresses and celebrities as their role models. This is how people are destroyed when we do, do, do not maintain that link with our history. And so, alhamdulillah, we are now in the month of Shawwal. Uh, the, the month of Shawwal, the word Shawwal actually means to, to lift or to carry because uh, at this time of the year, the Arabs, their camels would normally fall pregnant. And this is why it was named Shawwal, the month of lifting or carrying. And many significant events took place in this noble month. And for example, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, one of the most illustrious personalities from the Ahlul Bayt, from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, one of the greatest scholars and saints in our history, from whom even Imam Abu Hanifa took a lot of, of barakah, a lot of spiritual benefits. He was born in this month. Imam al-Bukhari, uh, we all know his status. He was born in this month as well. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's uh, beloved uncle Abu Talib, he was born in the month of Shawwal. The Battle of Uhud took place on the 17th of this month. So there are many significant events that we need to learn about and to remind our children about in this noble month. And so I would like to encourage all the parents and all the elders that uh, you should be spending some time in this month with your children, at least half an hour to an hour a day in the evening where you turn off the TV and any other distractions and sit with them and teach them about their history and about their heritage so that they admire these personalities and take them as their role models as opposed to the fake uh, celebrities uh, who are presented to them as the ideal role models in the 21st century. And also what's important is the uh, continuity of good deeds post Ramadan after this noble month. Um, fasting and reading the Quran and, re and understanding it is not confined to Ramadan. Even f fasting is not confined to Ramadan. Ramadan is not the name of fasting. Ramadan is the name of a month, like September. The word Ramadan means uh, intense heat. But the word for fasting in the Arabic language is Saum, which means al-imsak, to abstain from something, to stay away from something. That's what fasting is, staying away from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like. And there are various types of fasting. It's not just about fasting by staying away from food and drink, by overeating and over, over drinking and therefore oversleeping. But fasting is also to do with the tongue. Fasting of the tongue is to stay away from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes. Backbiting, lying, deceiving people, slandering people. And the fasting of the mind and the heart is to stay away and to avoid thinking about those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like. Having a bad opinion of, about people fantasizing and the fasting of the eyes is not looking at those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not approve of. And so 
to gain the benefits of Ramadan, it's very important for us to, to have this continuity. Because, for example, if we are trying to become fit and healthy and we go to the gym for a month, we work very hard in the gym, and then we, we, we exercise and we eat a very healthy diet, and as soon as that month is over for the, for the next 11 months, we are back to eating junk food, we are back to oversleeping and overeating, then there was actually, actually no point of, of working so hard for this one month. And so to really gain the spiritual benefits and the physical benefits of Ramadan, the continuity is important. Remaining constant, having this istiqamat. And Rasulullah in this regard, he set an, an example for us, practical example, by fasting six days in the month of Shawwal. And he said that anybody who fasts Ramadan and the six days of Shawwal will receive so much reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though he fasted for the entire year. And the ulama have explained this by saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in the Quran that if you do a good deed, I will times it by 10. I will give you at least 10 times the reward for it. And so you have 30 fasts in the month of Ramadan, times it by 10, that's 300. And then six fasts in Shawwal, times it by 10, that's 60. So the 300 plus 60 is 360, the fasting for a year. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the reward as though you fasted for a, a, a whole year if you fast Ramadan and then six days in Shawwal. And so it's important for us to continue to fast. The sunnah, of course, is, is on Mondays, uh, on Mondays, on Thursdays, or any day of the week we should fast so that we maintain the benefits of fasting. And again, with the Quran as well, reciting the Quran is not confined to the month of Ramadan. We need to make sure that uh, at least every morning after Fajr prayer, for example, we recite one ruku, one page at least of the Quran with translation and to see what the Quran is teaching us and to implement that practically. Because that's the, the purpose of the Quran being revealed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the, re the reason why I revealed the Quran is hudallin nas as a means of guidance for humankind. Not just so that you can sit there in Ramadan and listen to it without understanding it and then to put it away on the shelf afterwards. The, the whole purpose of it is to guide you how to live your life as, as a husband, as, as a wife, as a child, as a parent with your non-Muslim friends in every aspect of your life. And along with this, along with this continuity of good deeds, we do not want to waste the good deeds that we gained in the month of Ramadan. And one of the ways in which we waste our good deeds is, of course, through backbiting. And this is something that we should have learned to control in the month of Ramadan. We should have learned to control our tongue from backbiting about others. And this is a sin which the Prophet ﷺ has told us is worse than adultery. That when you commit adultery, when you commit zina, if you do tawbah, if you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will forgive you. But if you are backbiting about somebody, it's worse than adultery and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive you until the person forgives you. And the ulama have mentioned that there are only a few instances in which backbiting is permissible. For example, if somebody has done zulm against you, if you have any sort of injustice against you and you want to complain against that person, for instance, to a judge, then you can actually tell the, uh, the judge what happened to you. Because backbiting means talking about somebody in their absence, saying something that they would not like you to say. That's what backbiting is, even if it's true. But if you are complaining about them to a judge, for example, then it is permissible. And secondly, to seek help. If somebody is doing something wrong and you want to tell another person that he is doing something wrong, help me to stop him, then uh, backbiting within the limits is permissible. Uh, thirdly, if you want to ask for a fatwa, you want to ask for a fatwa from somebody, then you have to mention uh, the, the sin of the person or, or something that he's doing which he may dislike. But again, you shouldn't name the person. You should uh, keep it anonymous. Fourthly, to warn somebody. If you want to warn somebody of somebody else's evil, if you want to save somebody from harm, then you can also, in the limits, you can uh, talk about that person behind their back. And a common uh, example which is given is when there was a woman who wanted to marry one of two Sahaba, she came to Rasulullah and said that two men have proposed to me, one by the name of Abu Jaham and one by the name of Muawiyah. And Rasulullah said that Muawiyah is a poor man. He doesn't have much money. He doesn't really make much effort to get a job. If you get married to him, you will be harmed because you will be living in poverty. And Abu Jaham has got a very bad habit of uh, beating his wives. 
So you don't want to end up like that. And so Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned this lady and, and uh, revealed the habit of, the, of those two individuals so that she would not be harmed. These are the only instances when we can actually talk about a person behind their back. Otherwise, uh, just generally talking about people behind their back to create animosity, to create evil, or to, with the intention of lowering their status so that people think higher of you, or just for some sort of entertainment, is one of the worst sins that we can possibly do. Worse than adultery. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has uh, mentioned that when he went to the Mi'raj, when he went on the night journey, he saw people with very, very big nails, very big nails made out of copper. And they were scratching their self, themselves, their, their faces and, their, uh, and their, their chests. They were constantly made to scratch themselves, to tear their flesh. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told that this is a punishment for those who backbite. These people used to backbite and spread gossip about people in the community. And this is their punishment. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has warned us to have good opinions of people. That if somebody tells you something about somebody else, backbiting is not only to join in verbally, but also listening to it, you are equally as guilty. And just even to give some sort of ishara, just to nod your head or to, to laugh, to participate in that way, that's also just as bad. So you should get up and walk away. And say to that person, I don't, I don't want to waste my good deeds. All those good deeds I did in Ramadan, when I was waking up early every morning, all night I was uh, standing in Taraweeh, all night I was listening to the Quran, I don't want all that to be wasted. Imam Hassan al-Basri, the great Tabi'i, when he heard that somebody backbited about him, he would send them a bowl of fruit with, with, a, with a message. He would say that this is my gift to you in return for what you have given to me. Because when you backbited about me, all those prayers which you were reading, all those fasts in Ramadan, all that zakat which you were giving, all that has been taken from your account and put into mine. And so I'm very grateful for your generosity. You're a very kind person that you're giving me all your good deeds that you work so hard for. Please accept this bowl of fruit from me. It's very little compared to what you have given me, but please accept it as a small gesture from, on, on my behalf. And so we don't want to end up on Yom al Qiyamah thinking that Alhamdulillah, I've given so much charity, I fasted, I prayed all night, and then to come on that day expecting all these good deeds, only to be told that, well, I'm sorry, your account is empty because you are backbiting about other people in the community, and therefore your good deeds have been given to them. If we were to uh, put 10,000 pounds in our bank balance, in our bank account, and then we opened our account the next day, and we were shocked to find that it's, it's actually in zero or it's in overdraft, just imagine the shock that you would have. Well, we don't want to have uh, a greater shock than that on Yom Al-Qiyamah because if we're backbiting up about people, this is what will happen to us. And it's also important to have a good opinion of people and to remember that the person who we're backbiting about may be much better than us. There was a man in the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who committed adultery. And unfortunately, we have this very bad habit in our communities that, for example, if a, if a woman goes out of the house and she's not wearing her headscarf or she's not dressed the way we would expect her to be, we will start backbiting, the, w the women will get together in their house and start saying, oh, look at so-and-so's daughter, how she's going out not, not dressed properly. And they will jump to conclusions and, and accuse her of things for which they have absolutely no evidence whatsoever. Now, there was a man in the time of Rasulullah who came to the messenger and said that, Ya Rasulullah, I have committed, uh, committed adultery, I have committed zina. And he wanted the punishment for his confession. And so he was stoned to death. <clears throat> After this, the Prophet ﷺ was walking with the Sahaba Ikram, and then there was uh, a few of them who started backbiting about him and saying that, look at him, he got stoned and he died like a dog. Rasulullah ﷺ called those people and said, that dead donkey over there, go and eat its flesh. And the Sahaba Ikram said, Ya Rasulullah, how can we eat the, uh, the flesh of that dead donkey? And Rasulullah ﷺ said that what you have eaten is even worse than this, because you have eaten the flesh of your dead brother. And he said that, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this brother of yours who committed zina, who you are so quick to criticize, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I can see him right now walking in the streets of Jannah. And so this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to somebody who has that humbleness. So if somebody has a bad habit, they might have other good habits that we need to um, really try to give a good opinion to them about. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to not backbite. May Allah help us to uh, stay away from indulging in, in this uh, sin and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to have good opinions about each other and to make excuses for each other aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ir al-muslimin innahu huwal ghafurur rahim